This is not a sponsored video. Gear review! Ow, fuck! That's right, everyone. Gear review, YouTube's favorite show. Hey, cutie pies, what's happening? How am I? How am I? I'm good, I, I guess. Making videos, you know me. So if you've been along for the ride for a while, you know I dig instant cameras. To date, I've talked about the shitty poopy snap touch, the Instax Wide, the Mini 9, and now I gotta talk about the Polaroid One Step 2. And judging by all the dislikes on the snap touch video, I think I may have pet the proverbial cat in the wrong direction. So let's start out with a little bit of disclosure that personally I think is obvious, but you know, whatever, kids, kids in the back, I get it. I don't hate Polaroid at all. I just think the snap touch was a really bad misstep. I'm not entering this review with any sort of bias towards the company. And furthermore, I bought this camera with my own money. There's no sponsorships here. I'm not borrowing the camera from a friend. Like, I, I paid for this camera. And also, shockingly enough, the things I said in that last video are, are my opinions, and I stand by them. To me, the snap touch conceptually defeated the purpose of an instant camera by trying to cram a bunch of needless modern features into a cheap, flimsy touchscreen camera. They had low quality prints and an inconsistent user experience. And for $200, I'm sorry, I don't like that camera. Anyway, enough said about that one, because we're moving forward. I picked up the One Step 2, and I was really hopeful for Polaroid, a return to form seemed like the exact thing they needed to do. It's almost like they watched my video. So here are my thoughts on the Polaroid One Step 2 after several months of shooting on it. I'm gonna start with the simple stuff, ergonomics and aesthetics. Not those aesthetics, we've made that vaporwave joke already. The ergonomics are okay by me. <laughs> What a, what a glowing recommendation. I really love the way the camera feels in the hand. The weight is decent. It doesn't feel like a toy, but it's not gonna weigh you down either. The included strap is pretty horrible though, so I'd recommend throwing that in the garbage and getting a better one. My one complaint in the ergonomics department is the angle on the back of the camera. See, if you look at the classic Polaroid one step, there's like this tube-like thing here, leading the viewfinder graciously to your eyeball. On the one step two, there is no such tube thing. So what tends to happen is you smush your face up against this this angle thing, which causes the camera to slightly scoot up a bit. The severity of camera scoot varies depending on how fast you're moving. It could be negligible, or it could be completely photo ruining. And with the cost of film, that's not something you really want to think about. More on that later, though. On top of that, you get your face squeege all over the back of the camera. And before you write a, a nasty comment saying I have excessive face squeege, sh shut, the f shut the fuck up, everyone does. On to aesthetics. This camera is a straight up 10 for me. The design is so sleek and gorgeous. It's reminiscent of the classic, but at the same time, it managed to introduce some modern elements. Something some other Polaroids have a hard time with. <laughs> My favorite new element is the LED light panel on top. It indicates how many shots you have left. It's such a cool at-a-glance indicator. And I'm a sucker for the way the lights dance when you load in new film. The way the lens looks on the camera, it's, it's beautiful. I really can't praise the look of this camera enough. It's absolutely awesome. And speaking of the lens, you have a 106mm focal length with minimum focusing distance 23.6 inches to infinity. And, and beyond. So we're talking about an instant camera here. To me, ease of use is essential. Loading the film is a snap. Unlike the Polaroid snap touch before this, all you have to do on this camera is slide the cartridge in. The camera will eject the dark slide and you're ready to start shooting. The shutter button is nice. It's red, it's big, it's very tactile. You get some nice haptic feedback upon firing off a shot. On the front of the camera, you also have a light and dark switch, which acts as like an exposure compensation type of thing, as well as 
has a self timer button. These are all just standard buttons and slidey things, nothing crazy to say about them. The on off switch though, it's so satisfying to use, I find myself fiddling with it on the streets when I walk around with it. Beneath that we have a USB charger, that's right this camera charges via USB 2.0 same as most Android phones. And I have to say, the battery life is crazy, I've charged this thing once since I bought it. And finally we have the flash override button. Now Polaroid recommends that you always use the flash, even outdoors, and I kind of feel like they designed this button with that in mind because it's in a kind of awkward spot. It doesn't really feel great to press and it's almost like it's begrudgingly placed onto the camera. I'm not really a big fan of that button, but that's a minor complaint in an otherwise great camera build. And the camera feels sturdy, I don't think it would fare well on a throw it down the stairs test, and I'm not going to try that one until we, till we get that Polaroid sponsorship, I guess? Alright, it's time to talk about the most important aspect of this camera. How do the friggin' pictures look? In order to really get a feel for this camera, I took it all over Manhattan. I had a blast shooting with my friend Mike too, he was the one that helped me film some of the b-roll in this video and you should definitely go check out his Instagram. I also managed to shoot with the Polaroid over at the New York Auto Show, over at the Javits Center. When my good friend Alex asked me to help film his band recording his new music in Brooklyn, I packed my 60 Mark II and the Polaroid One Step II. Oh yeah, and fun fact, the song playing right now is his band conversing with oceans. Good music comes out of the Bronx, my friends. And finally, outside of the random little shoots where I brought out the Polaroid, I brought it to the Warp Tour in Long Island. I figured I'd bring it because the 2018 Warp Tour is their last cross-country tour. It's a sad day for punk kids. I can't really see why you'd shut down something with this many people interested at 40 bucks a ticket, but whatever, I'm gonna shut up now and show you some B-roll. So what's it like shooting on the Polaroid? Well, I really love it. Apart from the aforementioned face sliding issue, it's dead simple to use. The little snap sound when you fire off a shot is great, and it just feels good in the hands. It doesn't weigh you down, and you get all sorts of, oh wow, he's got a Polaroid comments. It is a great conversation starter, but admittedly, it does get tiresome after a while, but what can I say? It's a unique little camera. But we can't talk about this user experience without talking about the film itself. So uh, let's, let's do that. After shooting so many packs of film on the One Step 2, I can confidently say that the Polaroid film, the Polaroid Originals and iTypes film, is more reliable than the Impossible film. The Impossible film suffers from a lot of issues of partial development or just kind of weird color shifts, which to some people that might be cool, but it seems the Polaroid film itself is the more reliable choice, and ironically the Polaroid film is also cheaper than the Impossible film. And just a reminder that these are my findings, this is my experience with the camera, so this is some anecdotal, but in my experience, the Polaroid film seems to beat out the Impossible film. And this is where the review is going to take a slight turn. It's not quite like that highway meme, but there are some problems to report here. But first, let me explain the film a little bit. It's a little confusing. We have the Polaroid Originals film which is the typical Polaroid 600 film. This can be used in both the old Polaroid cameras and the newer One Step 2 generation cameras. Then we have the iType film, which only works in the newer cameras. I tested it on a classic Polaroid to see what would happen, and it just spits out a blue frame. Nothing exposes, so there you go. I did it so you wouldn't have to. You're welcome for uh, wasting a whole pack of film. Finally, we have the Impossible Project film. Now, Impossible, if you don't remember, is the group who is making 
making film for Polaroid cameras when Polaroid stopped and then was part of the whole Polaroid acquisition which kicked off this originals campaign. And all of these films have specific instructions regarding developing. They all vary slightly and you can read them for yourselves on the packaging, but here are the highlights. You need to shield them from light immediately after shooting them. And they can take up to 20 minutes to develop. So normally what I do is when I shoot, I keep the box the film cartridge came in and after firing a shot, I just stuff the photo right in there and forget about it for a bit. Sometimes I won't even look until I go home for the day. Whether you buy the originals, the iType, or the impossible film, it's encouraged that you keep the film cool, as in, in the refrigerator. Here comes the first issue. Unless you're shopping at a store like B&H, you're very rarely going to find these film packages refrigerated. On the contrary, they're usually just sitting out with the electronics, which is fine. I don't expect stores to change their whole layout for film that honestly probably doesn't sell very well. But I also have to say, I've purchased Polaroid Originals and iType packages from Target and have had several packs come out really messed up and I have to assume it's from improper storage because that film was not expired. It seems that Urban Outfitters stores carry the film now as well, but for some reason the packs of film that are $20 in Target are $25 in Urban Outfitters. I guess you can always go the Amazon route too, but again that cuts back to the storage and transportation and heat messing with the film. It really is a bit of a dilemma and I'm not too sure how you would resolve it. In my experience, the impossible film seems like a roll of the dice too. Sometimes I get really amazing results and then other times I get photos that don't even finish developing. So here's the bottom line. When the film works, it's magical. The colors are these beautiful, faded, subtle, just so aesthetically pleasing. The focus is usually really spot on, but the problem is the film as of now is somewhat unreliable. And here's the kicker, the originals, eye types, and impossible film packs are the most expensive instant film on the market right now. We're talking 20 to 25 US dollars per pack. Compare that to the $12.99 for the Instax mini film, it's honestly crazy. Just 5 packs of Polaroid originals ends up running you more than the camera itself. And when you're spending that kind of money to shoot, I'm sorry sorry, but there really needs to be better storage for the film and better quality control. As of now, I'd say roughly 30% of the Polaroid photos I shot came out messed up to some degree that was out of my control. And some people would argue that's the fun of instant photography. You never know what is going to come through those doors. And you're right, part of the magic is just focusing on shooting and seeing what's happening right in front of your eyes. I mean, that was kind of my argument for why the screen was a bad idea. But when you leave that frame in the dark for a few minutes to develop and you pull out of your pocket just a, a underdeveloped mess, it kind of puts a damper on the whole experience. And especially if you're on a budget, that's a problem. The last thing I'll say about the film is I've had a lot of frames come out with little scratches on them. But honestly, I think that might be a little bit of use user error. When the frames come out, they have this protective plastic thing over them, and I think if you snap that back too quickly, it drags across the frame, and that's probably what's causing those scratches. But again, I really do need to stress, when this film works, it fucking works, man. It's really cool. So overall, the Polaroid 1 Step 2 is leaps and bounds better than the Snap Touch. It's honestly a better camera in literally every regard. The look and the feel of the camera are spot on. The photos, when the the film cooperates absolutely rock. Here's to hoping the first few batches of the film were just like a beta test and as time moves on the bugs will get worked out of the film. Learning curve or not, if enough people get burned by bad film, they're not going to keep spending 20 to 25 dollars per pack. Either way, despite some of the flaws, this camera is worth considering. It's not an everyday camera, that's for sure. But if you're a fan of instant photography, this is a solid contender for your collection. And to me personally, it's right up there with the Instax wide. I think it's just a matter of what mood I'm in to shoot. Do I want a square or a rectangle? All right guys, that about does it for me. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Make sure you smash that subscribe or like. Tell me what you think of the camera too if you have it. And I'll see you in the next video. There's no sponsorship, no one's letting me borrow the camera. The Snap Touch conceptually defeated the purpose of an Instax camera. The severity of this varies, depends. This, the sever, it could be negligible to the photo or it could be a ruining angle. You could fuck up the framing in this fucking plane. And speaking of the lens, you have a 100, fuck. And speaking of the lens,
They're all standard, nothing really to crazy. Not really a big fan of that button, but it's a minor complaint in... Not a big fan of it, but it's a minor complaint. And speaking of the lens, you have a 100... Uh, uh, let's not try that one until we get the sponsorship. <laughs> on the front of the camera, you also have... And on the topic of stores, I've actually had a bit of trouble. Can you shut the fuck up? But when you leave that frame in the dark for a few to develop and you pull it out of your pocket only to see a messed up, undeveloped Instax wide, it's one of the best. And for me personally, there's a plane coming. <laughs>